Honourable Member for Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Here, here. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. It's an honour to speak on behalf of the people of Nanaimo, Lady Smith, but this is certainly a hard story. Uh, I support the government's approach moving forward, but I do want to talk about the impact in my immediate community to uh, describe the imperative why action is so important. Since 2008, Nanaimo has had more deaths per capita from drug overdoses than anywhere else in British Columbia. Our region had a 135% increase in opioid deaths last year, and fentanyl was present in 50% of overdoses. This is a national emergency. Our region has not had the action that we need on it, and the federal government response has been unacceptably slow. In October at the Health Committee, I urged that the study, which was initiated by an NDP motion by uh, my colleague from Vancouver Kingsway, uh, that federal leadership needed, was needed immediately to tackle the opioid overdose epidemic. I urged better access to drug treatment programs and safe consumption sites and support for health prof professionals, including addiction training. I urged that uh, the government also create a national action plan on post-traumatic stress disorder for frontline emergency personnel and public safety officers in this vital line of work. When I talk with firefighters in Nanaimo, they tell me that they used to see three overdose calls uh, a year. Now they see three a shift. Now these young and fine men and women signed up to fight fires, mostly. Um, so I want to read some of the words from Mike Rispin, who's uh, one of the uh, chiefs at the downtown and I'm a fire uh, department. He says, in my 25 years as a firefighter, we've had periods when there were sharp increases in opioid overdoses, usually due to a stronger drug on the streets. These periods used to last only a few weeks. Sadly, the recent introduction of fentanyl has made our response to overdoses a regular occurrence, and I can only foresee this as a regular ongoing issue. I can only imagine what we will see with the use of carfentanil, which has been discovered in town now. We will have even more overdoses and more difficulty bringing these patients back to consciousness. Nanaimo is a small community of 90,000 people, but the overdoses we are seeing now are increasing dramatically. Thankfully, the Island Health Authority has opened a safe injection site, which should assist in reducing deaths from the use of opioids. That's signed by Mike Rispin. So how did we get here? Opioid prescription rates are sky high in Canada versus other countries. Our doctors overprescribe, and that's because the pharmaceutical companies oversell. Chronic pain is not managed well in our country. Some people are just left completely on their own and they do become drug dependent because they're not getting the pain management support they need. We also have, and we've seen this particularly in my colleague from Vancouver East riding, childhood sexual abuse, unrecognized, unreported, untreated. Uh, Gabor Mate, who's a doctor who's worked particularly in the downtown east side, he says every drug addicted woman, patient of his, every one of them was a victim of childhood sexual abuse. This is the hungry ghost syndrome that he describes, a wound, a psychic wound that cannot be healed. People turn to drugs. Um, and some communities were used as a test market for new drug ingredients, and that certainly is our speculation about Nanaimo. Many people using uh, illegal drugs are not aware that fentanyl is included in it, and they get into terrible trouble. Uh, in my community, I want to salute the many, many heroes who've stepped up in the absence of provincial and federal leadership. They've saved a lot of lives, but it's been at a great personal cost to them. I'm hugely grateful for their work, and by supporting this bill, I hope that we're going to be able to get uh, the support that they need to do this very difficult job they've been given. Another group that is such a hero in my, my community, AIDS Vancouver Island and the AIDS Vancouver Island Health Centre. Claire Deneen, who's the health promotion educator there in Nanaimo, she has led training for 800 people who are now trained in how to administer naloxone, which is the antidote to fentanyl. 
That woman has saved a lot of lives. I also want to salute uh, Dr. Paul Hasselbach, who's the chief medical officer for the Vancouver Island Health Authority. We're very lucky to have a man like him in our riding. When I go to meet with him, he's got both the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People and the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission on his desk. That is a sign of a man who's fully integrated in his work and making change in our country. He writes, for the past four years, the riding that you represent has had rates of narcotic overdose fatalities that are some of the highest in the country. During this time, close to 100 of our neighbors, friends, and families have passed away from this preventable tragedy. In four years, overdoses have become a leading cause of preventable deaths in our community. Now, an integrated approach to a community response has resulted in a much smaller increase in 2016 when compared to other BC communities. Action can save lives. He goes on in his letter, when finally presented through actions of the province of BC with ways to implement overdose prevention sites or emergency responses available, the community has overwhelmingly embraced the service. Supervised consumption is to be recognized as a health service that can and should be provided in a variety of settings. We also need to look to the future and how to prevent drug addiction. Youth employment, affordable housing, meaningful community contributions are our best approach to engaging those that illicit drug predators would target as future consumers. Action is needed now to mitigate this crisis and needs to consider what can be done to reverse the recruitment of persons to experiment with potentially addictive drugs. While legislation is welcomed, it focuses again predominantly on the enforcement side of the equation permitting for harm reduction <laughs> services. What actions will the federal government take in prevention and in facilitating treatment or at least research into effective treatment? What actions will the government take on engaging youth on drugs similar to past efforts to work on tobacco? He finishes by saying Family Day is a great day to remember that many of our friends and colleagues have personally been affected through a member of their family. I have many short stories that I've heard that are gut-wrenching efforts to help loved ones. And then there are also stories of success to be shared. Here's another success story from my writing. This is sent by a third year biology student attending Vancouver Island University. He was one of the organizers of Vancouver's first unsanctioned supervised injection site. When people were dying on the streets and we couldn't get provincial or federal support, Jeremy Callicum and others um, did, took this action and, and he writes this description. In short order, we established an unsanctioned supervised injection site equipped equipped with harm reduction supplies, volunteers, nurses, and naloxone. Our goal was to provide a judgment-free space that would allow people who use drugs to feel that their situation and struggles were not being ignored. Although people who used drugs were initially skeptical of our service, they soon learned we were not there to entrap them. We wanted them to be safe. That uh, facility is not operating now because we have had the health authority just in the last few weeks open a supervised injection site. I'm proud that New Democrats led the fight against the Conservatives Bill C-2, which was absolutely damaging um, at just the time that we needed to have progressive action. I'm glad that the Liberals are bringing forward uh, Bill C-37. It's overdue. We wanted it a year ago. We want the Liberals to call this a national emergency. Uh, the war on drugs approach has clearly been a failure, and instead of stigmatizing and punishing Canadians who are suffering from substance abuse disorders, it is time for bold and compassionate leadership from the federal government. We need to rapidly expand proven harm reduction approaches while making significant long-term investments in prevention and public addiction treatments of all kinds. I uh, urge this Parliament to vote in favour of C-37 for the government to accelerate its action in some of the other areas that we have identified to view uh, drug addiction as a health issue and most importantly right now to send our thanks and our support to the frontline responders who are filling a tremendous gap in a time of true national emergency. 
Ah, questions and comments. Uh, commentaire, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate the comments uh, from the Minister, uh, from, the, from the member across the way. Um, and, you know, one of the things that's really important to, to recognize is that, uh, you know, the New Democrats have acknowledged the importance and supported us as a government trying to push this legislation forward. It's uh, truly appreciated. But it is one aspect of a comprehensive approach that the government has taken in terms of being able to deal with the national crisis. And I'm wondering if the member would like to provide some, some comment in terms of, yes, the legislation is good, we hope to get it passed soon, but it's also uh, important that we work with the many different stakeholders. And the stakeholders I'm referring to, whether it's the provincial entities, the municipal uh, governments, um, uh, the first, re uh, first responders, the communities themselves, that there's a, a much larger role for all of us to be playing, and the important role that the national government needs to play is one of, of leadership. And uh, so it's more of a holistic approach in trying to be able to prevent many of these accidental suicides, uh, suicides accidental overdoses uh, from taking place. Would she not agree? The Honourable Member for Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Well, we were hoping a, a year ago that the federal government would step up and declare uh, the opioid overdose crisis a national emergency. Uh, we had uh, testimony at the Health Committee where Dr. Emberly from the Canadian Pharmacists Association said it is definitely a national problem. No community is unaffected. For that reason, I believe we have to treat it as a national crisis. We also had uh, Dr. Blackmer from the Canadian Medical Association say absolutely the chief public health officer should be coordinating a national response to the opioid overdose crisis. Uh, there's a lot the federal government can learn from what's being done at the provincial level. This is a national emergency. So, uh, uh, you know, we wish that the Liberals had stepped up earlier. We certainly thought that they were going to based on their election rhetoric. but. Uh, and people have died in the interim. So we want uh, them to accelerate their actions and support frontline workers and, uh, and addicts and their families. Okay. Questions and comments?